the Cape Crusader gets a customized new car. Here's your look at the Jada Toys, the Batman, Batman and Batmobile. From the 2021 movie, The Batman, comes this incredibly detailed die-cast metal Batmobile. The Batman 2021 Batmobile 124th scale die-cast metal vehicle with figure recreates Batman's signature vehicle and includes a Batman figure. Now, before we get a closer look at Batman and, of course, his own set of wheels, let's first figure out how tall the figures stand. Now, the die-cast Batman metal figure can't, for obvious reasons, sit inside just because there's no articulation at all in these figures. They're cer certainly more just statue pieces that are there to be displayed in front of their wheels. Anyways, though, let's take the tape measure just to see how tall. Batman only stands only about, what, two inches in height, and that's working out to be a figure that's just a little over five centimeters tall. As for the Batmobile itself, going from the end of the bumper to the front of its bumper, you're looking at the Batmobile being about seven and a half inches in length. And again, to spin that around, you're looking at it being roughly about 19 centimeters long. So this Batmobile is a 124th scale model. The uh, Jada Toys also does produce a 118th version of the same Batmobile. But for the sake of sizing and, of course, what it would be eating into budget-wise, I'm more happy and content to start collecting a lot of these Batmobiles in the 124th scale. You're just getting just as much detail as you would with the larger scale vehicles. Speaking of other 124th scale models, we're going to go ahead and actually just move over Pattison for the time being. We'll get back into him, looking at him in a second. Also just want to move over the Batmobile. I did free up a little bit of space. I thought it would be fun to actually bring in Ben Affleck's Batman Batmobile, which again is 124th scale. Uh, to compare the two, looking at them, of course, Affleck's Batmobile is certainly a lot bigger, a lot more menacing than the more sleeker, streamlined uh, Pattinson version of the Batmobile. But, you know, again, for the difference of what they did bring to the table, I kind of actually liked the new Batman's Bat Batmobile because, again, it just kind of represented his earlier ventures into fighting crime. It's not to say that he isn't going to go from something like this to eventually driving around something a little bit more, well, again, a little bit more menacing. But I think that's pretty cool. And again, like these all scale well to one another. And while the canopy here did open up on Ben Affleck's Batmobile, Pattinson's actually does open the side doors like any other traditional car that you'd be driving. Maybe what we will do first is pick up the little included figurine of Batman that comes included with his ride. It's a nicely detailed, I mean, for its size, just to show you what my, well, not that my thumb would be a good measuring tool, but just to kind of show you how big it is, it's about the size of my thumb. It's nicely painted and detailed. The one thing it is actually lacking a bit, though, is it doesn't have pupils, which some would actually say it's a welcoming treat to not see Batman with pupils. Again, the costume, again, is all done here in gray. It's all metal. So, like, this is just a full metal figurine. The only thing that isn't actually metal is the rubbery cape that they put on the back of its torso. Technically, this does come with its own display stand. When you did first take this out of the box, it comes included with this little stand that the figure stands on top of. Now, as it re is right now, you can't stand it on this stand. As you can see, there's pegs, little holes that stick underneath. This would have been the thing that held the screws in place. What you can do, though, is if you still wanted to use that display stand, take the bottom half of it that would have been on the bottom side of that cardboard tray, and you just line these two up. Do I have it going the right way? I don't have it going the right way. Line these two up like this. Fit this back into the holes. Now you got yourself a little display stand. Now, if you even wanted to go one step further and permanently attach Batman to the display stand, you simply would just repeat the steps backwards and screw the holes back in. And that would, of course, attach that, plant that to the bottom of Patton's feet. And you got yourself a little Batman display with a display stand. For the fact that these stand fine on their own, and again, the plan of not to have them actually sitting inside of their vehicle, they actually just look nice to be displayed alongside of each of their bat Batmobiles. I think of right now, I've actually got myself, I know I've got the Justice League or, or Batman v Superman Batmobile, and I've caught the little version of Ben Affleck, which I should have actually brought back in for the sake of comparing the two Batmans. But I do have that, and I also have the Adam West one 24th scale Batmobile from most of the 60s Batman series. 
I would love to again continue picking up more of these because I do like the four, I like the scale of 124th a lot more. I used to back then like the 118th a lot more just because they were bigger vehicles, but bigger vehicles also take up a lot more space on the shelf. These again smaller in size. Going ahead though and picking up the Batmobile actually. Its model is actually based on the late 60s Dodge Charger, which you can almost kind of see a little bit of that in the actual design of the vehicle itself. It is certainly more of a vehicle that's built for pursuit. The fact that actually, well, first of all, you can open up the doors inside, revealing, first of all, a roll cage. So again, Batman built the whole idea of the Batmobile. It's something that if it eventually did have to flip over or it landed onto its roof, that Batman would be then protected inside. So it certainly is built for pursuit and built for durability. You can see the inside steering wheel, everything essentially is all molded here in black plastic. There doesn't seem to be anything that they painted in there. But for the size and, again, the fact that Batman ever always keeps things generally in that black scale, the fact that they didn't actually go in there and paint anything, it doesn't really bother me at all because I would imagine Batman would have had black seats, would have had black steering wheel. Again, Batman loves everything black. The Not only the driver's side, but also the passenger's side door can also open up. And again, you can see like he would have to have again crawled over top of this. That would imagine be quite difficult. Although unless there's like a little hinge on the door on the inside where you'd actually have to open this up. So he'd open the door and then he'd open up the roll cage also inside. Or again, Batman would even have to slip inside even like a Duke slipping inside a Dodge Charger. Not the first time we certainly have seen that. The other thing that actually does open on this is not the back because there's no trunk space. Essentially, this is all the thrusters on the back of the vehicle get more into that in a second. And while it doesn't necessarily have a hood that opens up this way, what it does have instead is if you just flip the front forward, the little side sections that I guess hold the motor are the one thing that also flips up from the vehicle. There's technically that way of displaying it as well. It does look a little admittingly awkward to have just this part sticking up. This is, by the way, metal. The motor itself feels like and actually taps like it's made of plastic. So again, we'll just fold that back down. You know, it's kind of neat, actually, the way that does fold up the way that it does. It would obviously distract and block his view while he's driving and sitting inside the vehicle. But having it up slightly like this, does it not replicate a little bit of like the bat head with the ears, the points and the ears on the sides? Close that back down. The whole majority of the body is metal frame. The undercarriage is plastic. The tires also, again, are plastic. They're also not using rubber for the tires, which is fine. Plastic is certainly still a serviceable option of having at least the Batmobile still rollable. You can easily roll it back and forth. Tires, especially rubber on smaller scale vehicles like this, are prone to splitting over time. So using plastic is best, best the smarter means of getting a more durable tire long term. The one thing notable about the Batmobile is, in fact, also the hubcaps stick further out from the tire. Again, for the idea that this thing is going to be coming close to other corded cars. Uh, it does have a rear light there on the back. Of course, it's got tail lights also on the sides. Nothing is actually colored. What they've done instead is they've used just translucent red plastic to get the job done on both the sides. Again, you've got the main thruster on the back here. The engine, I guess the back engine of this, all done nicely here in a more dark gunmetal gray. And then again, you've got some exhaust pipes there also sticking out from the top. Again, it's a really menacing looking vehicle. And I did wonder though, looking at the front of it and what grill you can see, because it's got a very broad bumper in the front of it for its protection and ramming other vehicles in front of it. You can see like there is a clear plastic grill that they've used. And then you can almost just barely make out the fact that this does actually have headlights. I've always wondered what Jada Toys would ever do if they released these with like on options. Not the sense that they would actually have to include batteries because of course that would increase the cost of producing these vehicles. But I wonder if they could actually go in there and release, I guess an on version would probably make no sense at all because a lot of times you're probably going to be displaying this the idea that Batman has already left the vicinity of his vehicle. But if they could have actually gone in there and painted the headlights and then painted the tail lights that make them look like they're on. Because especially with a vehicle like this dark, there's so much black on black on black. And it, the little bit of color that we actually do get, even things like headlights get lost in the, in the shuffle. Again, if they had gone and colored in those lights, but I'm still honestly not sure how I feel about the matter because as easily it is for me to say, it's nice if they could have colored in headlights. For me, I would ultimately just, you know, you're going to be displaying Batman anyways alongside his Batmobile. He's already gotten out of the vehicle. The vehicle is turned off. Therefore, why would you want to have the headlights? Plus two, if all the other vehicles don't have headlights on, why would you have this one with the headlights and the taillights turned on? 
Still, though, it's a nice looking vehicle. I really like the sleek design of this particular Bat Batmobile and like the cases we've seen before. There is things that can, can technically open up on the vehicle, including the front section, which again, does seem a little bit strange that it doesn't do anything else but that. And we didn't really even see how that worked in the movie. But at least that's one other thing that Jada Toys does add also to Robert Pattinson's Batmobile. Overall, it's a nice looking design. Now, again, this one is also going to get released in a 118th scale, which I would imagine is not going to be that much different from the 124 fourth variety that we're looking at right now for me again i'm content now with with a lot of collecting these vehicles in a smaller scale it takes up a lot less space and the price point is not only about half the price but i think with this one being a little over 20 the 118th model of the batman batmobile was sitting more close to the mid 60s so it's going to be a little bit more expensive it's going to ask a lot more dedication on you from a shelf space size space but it's also going to ask a lot more of your budget if you don't mind collecting this in a 118 variety then there again jada toys also has that model available but again i'm content the idea of just collecting these in a 124th you get just as much detail and you got yourself a little batman that can also go along for the ride as well the 2021 Batman Batmobile I ended up picking up over on Entertainment Earth's website. It was hot off their truck, which is basically the option that they have on their site where you can see the stuff that they have just stocked into the building. And the Batmobile happened to be one of those. I was already planning to pick this one up. And as soon as I saw it, I added it to my cart right away. Now, if you are somebody that doesn't collect as much the 124th and instead like to collect the 118th scale, like I used to collect back in the day, there is also a 118th version of the Batman Batmobile coming out also near the end of this year. I think Jada Toys is slated release this around the October 2022 price uh, timeline and the price point for that is going to be a differencing of about $40. This one was advertised over on, on Entertainment Earth's website for $27.99. The 118th model was sitting around $65. So it's, it, it's almost a $40 difference. Now, if you had asked me years ago when I was first getting into collecting the die-cast cars of popular television and film, I leaned more to the idea of collecting 118th. I just like the more bigger size because I think also my father was kind of more into collecting the 118th models and I sort of followed suit after that. But it seems for me at least when I'm seeing the stuff that Jada Toys have been releasing over the years, as much as they release the popular things in both 124th and 118th, they seem to release more the obscure models of vehicles more in only the 124th. You remember far back when, when we actually had a look at Freddy's striped rooftop convertible that we see at the end of the movie. As far as I know, Jada Toys only ever released that in 124th, and maybe that was the thing that got me rolling, so to speak, into why I wanted to collect more than 124th models. Not only are we getting kind of the more interesting looking vehicles that we wouldn't normally have gotten otherwise, but it also took up a lot less space. And let's face facts too. As a collector, I can admit for myself that I'm running out of space every single day that space fleets a little bit more these ones are good because you're still getting as much detail as what you would get with the larger 118th scale but you're getting them at a much smaller format and you're also getting yourself a die cast batman that can be displayed along with it i don't think that's bad at all again if you guys are interested to pick this one up for yourself it's over available right now at entertainment earth's website i'll provide the link down below in the video description and in the, certainly in the meantime, if you like this video, why not hit it with a like? And if you're loving the content that you're seeing and certainly want to stick around for more, then hit the subscribe button down below and turn the bell notification on so you're going to get reminders every single time a new video pops up. Speaking of other videos popping up, if you would like to certainly delve deeper and maybe go, go down the rabbit hole yourself of collecting the Jada Toys vehicles and want better examples of some of the stuff the companies have been producing, then at the very end will be a playlist of all the other Jada Toys vehicles I've been looking at over the years with, I'm sure, many more to follow. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.